peeps. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. Hopefully everybody is doing great. Today we'll be discussing a very important topic that has been making headlines for years now, the Mexican cartels. Cartels have been operating in Mexico for decades now and have become a major threat to the country's security and stability. So let's dive in and explore this topic a bit further. To begin with, let's understand what exactly are these Mexican cartels. Mexican cartels are criminal organizations that are involved in various illegal activities such as drug trafficking, human trafficking, money laundering, and arms smuggling. These cartels operate mainly in Mexico but have a significant presence in other countries such as the United States and South America. The Mexican cartels are known for their brutal tactics and use of violence to achieve the objective. They are responsible for numerous killings, kidnappings, and other violent crimes. The cartels are massive influence of the Mexican government and society, and their presence has caused significant damage to the country's economy. So let's talk about the history of the Mexican cartels. The roots of the cartels can be tracked back to the 1980s, when drug trafficking started to become a profitable business. The first cartel to emerge was the Guadalajara Cartel, which was led by Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo. The Guadalajara Cartel controlled most of the drug trafficking operations in Mexico until, this, until it was dismantled in the late 1980s. After the fall of the Guadalajara Cartel, the power shifted to the Tijuana Cartel and the Juarez Cartel. The Tijuana Cartel was led by Arellano Felix brothers, who were known for their brutal tactics. The Juarez Cartel was led by Carrillo Fuentes family and, as, and was known for its violence and corruption. Now let's talk about the current state of the Mexican cartels. The Mexican government has been waging a war against the cartels for years now. The government has deployed thousands of troops and federal agents to fight against the cartels. Despite the efforts, the cartels continue to operate and expand their operations. So some people say that these cartels are associated with the government and that there is a lot of there's a lot of corruption, right? So we don't really know. We don't really know if it's true. It's just what you hear, and you hear that presidents are are voted in for a reason, and they're voted in to help the cartels, and the cartels to help the president, which nobody really knows, right? I mean, I don't, I don't uh, live in Mexico, so I have no idea how, you know, how bad the corruption is. Yes, when I was uh, growing up and we were in Mexico, it was a little bit different. There wasn't a whole lot of social media and any of that stuff, so it was a little bit different. You. You would get your news from watching TV or the newspaper, right? When you hear of all this tragic stuff that was happening. The cartels have diversified their business and are now involved in various illegal activities such as human trafficking and money laundering. The cartels have also expanded their operations beyond Mexico and, and now operating in other countries such as the United States. So let's talk about the impact of the Mexican cartels, right? On the Mexican society, the cartels have caused significant damage to the Mexican economy and have contributed to the country's high crime rate. The cartels are also responsible for numerous human rights violations, including kidnappings, extortions, and murders. The cartels have also caused significant damage to Mexico's image, and the country is now known for a hub for organized crime, which is very sad. It's very sad because there is a lot of good Mexican people that go to work every day, that uh, they, they go through the everyday struggles. And then you have these cartels, right, just going around and, and causing harm. Instead of just doing what they need to do, these people end up taking innocent lives along the way when they're out there shooting at everybody or whatever, whatever they do over there. So in conclusion, the Mexican cartels are a significant th threat to the Mexican society and the world. The cartels have caused significant damage to the Mexican economy and have contributed to the country's high crime rate. The Mexican government must continue to fight the cartels and take measures to er eradicate them completely, which is one of the problems that that country has. Is So if, if these people are actually trying to get rid of them or there is money and corruption involved, that's something that that uh, you hear a lot about, right? In, in this country, in the United States, there is a lot of corruption also. So if there's corruption here, a lot of corruption, then you can guess that the corruption is really big in Mexico, which is, uh, it's pretty sad, right? It's pretty sad that all this stuff happens and it's all about money 
and the drugs and then you have uh, fentanyl going to Mexico and Mexico bringing the fentanyl here and the fentanyl is being brought by I believe China and I mean they're buying it from over there and they're Mexico is making it and they're sh they're shipping it to the U.S. so it's a huge huge problem and not even with the if you legalize drugs, it's, it's never going to stop because these guys are no longer in drugs. They are also in businesses and housing, you know, real estate and banking and uh, shipping of produce. And, you know, they're in all kinds of businesses where if you legalize drugs, these guys are always going to have an outlet anyways for organized crime. So it's, you know, it, it's how do you stop something like this? It's like, I don't know if you really can. I don't know if you really can because there's always going to be organized crime. There's not going to be such thing as you're going to stop it because they're always going to find a different way to uh, to get their money, right? And to extort people and to uh, and to threaten people. I remember uh, back in the day, uh, as as most of my listeners know, is I was born in Mexico. I was born in one of the most dangerous uh, cities of Mexico in the world, and. Uh, I don't know if I said that right. I was born in the most one of the most dangerous cities in the world, right? In Mexico. And uh, you hear a lot of stuff because it's really big over there. And pe people with businesses will, uh, the cartels will go over there and basically ask for money, right? For protection, which the protection is basically from them because they're the ones that are extorting the people, the, the business owners. So basically they'll say, hey, you want to have this business? Then you need to pay up this much money every month or whatever we need to take you know 80 percent of your earnings and we won't shoot you up and we won't take the business and and that's the way it is right they uh they're like big bullies in mexico and they want to take over everything over people's businesses and and it's sad because there's a lot of people that work really hard for their for what they have and uh you know they're trying to feed their families and, and trying to do something good but apparently having a business in mexico is dangerous right because these people want to take over everything and not only the cartels but you also have a lot of people from for instance el salvador and stuff like that that go over there and they and they they try to do the, the organized crime there too so it's what is mexico is a a huge it's um I mean, it's right next to Texas, right? It's right next to the United States. And it's, I mean, it's right there, man. It's a border town. It's a border city. So it's its really hard to stop anything because it's crossing back and forth, crossing back and forth. And there's tons of other um, other people crossing over to to Mexico and they're, they're committing crimes. And then they jump over to the United States and they continue to commit crimes. So there's there's no stopping anything. It's just, uh, it's just flowing in as we go. And there's not enough police there's not enough immigration there's not enough anything to stop these people there is a lot of corruption obviously on this side too where i'm pretty sure they uh, pay a certain amount of money and they let them cross and it's just uh it, it's hard right because you have to make sure that you find the right people the people that are willing to do the right thing but at the same time what do you do when somebody comes up to you and goes if you don't take this money we're gonna get rid of you what are you gonna do and we're gonna get rid of you and your family. So what are you supposed to do? So either you take the money or you're gonna get killed for free. So it's one of those decisions where these people are like, oh my god, you know. And it takes it takes uh, a person uh, to a really strong person to say, I'm not gonna do that. But at the same time, you are endangering your life and your family's life. So it's like you can't win, right? You just can't win because these people are so big and they have ties to the government. They have ties to everybody. Where you're never going to win. So it's like people are like, well, I'm not going to do that job then. I'm not going to become a Border Patrol officer or a federal agent anymore because what's the point? I'm never going to win. And as soon as you take that money, you're screwed because now you, they basically own you. And if you don't keep helping them, you're toast. You and your family and everybody's toast. They'll find you somewhere in a barrel of acid and you're screwed. So drugs are a, a huge thing, but it's not just drugs. Like I, Like I said, it's it's the organized crime. It's the cartels themselves that are that are are the problem, right? And like I said, it's not just because of the drugs. It's of everything. They are involved in everything. If you look it up and you do some research, you realize that these these cartels are involved in everything: export and import of everything, businesses, and I mean, you name it professional teams, and I mean, it's, they're everywhere, right? They're controlling everything, and when it's gone this far 
there's really not much you can do anymore, which is super sad. I wanted to make this episode of a super an informative episode because this is this is the troubles that we that we go through, especially me being born in a different country. I've seen this as I grew up. This was a normal thing. And living in the United States and growing up here in the United States and you you see all the stuff that happens. And you're like, man, it's just nonstop. No matter where you move, there's always going to be something like this. And there's just not enough good guys to fight them because there's always money involved. Right. They'll, there are people have a price. Some people have a price. There's this saying that everybody has a price, but I don't think so. I don't think so. It's just uh, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that the people that don't have a price are no longer here. So there are some people that uh, you know they have no choice and they have to help. They have to help the bad people, right? And it's uh, it's sad because there's really who are you going to run to, right? When the other people are also involved, who's going to help you? Who's going to help us when those people are so big and so powerful? that there's nothing that you can do. There's no police station that you can go to. They'll get to you. They'll get to you somewhere or another. If you screw them up big time, they'll find you, right? They have they have people that work for them. And it's just a, a money thing, right? It's for power. And I'm sure there's a lot of people involved in all this stuff. And, you know, it's sad because, you know, one thing tells me, it's like, well, if you're doing this stuff, like you don't have to hurt your citizens. You don't have to hurt your Mexican people. You don't have to go around spraying bullets everywhere and shooting up tourists and shooting up innocent Mexican families. I mean, that's it's horrible, right? You know, they kidnap people, they stop a car, they take them and they torture them. And they're like, oh, oops, these are the wrong people. And it, it's it's sad that they 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 get a description of a car or a description of people and they just find you. And they don't even know if it's you and they interrogate you and they kill you for no reason. And it's not even the right people. And that happens all the time over there. And I'm sure it happens here too in the United States. So it's this is one of those hard topics, right? That uh, I mean, I grew up with this, and uh, you know, it was never a good thing, right? And it wasn't as it wasn't as big as it is now because social media back then was different, right? There was there was no Facebook, there was no none of that stuff. It didn't exist. It was all newspaper stuff. So there's only so much news you can get through the newspaper and through the Mexican media. Now it's everywhere, right? Now Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and everywhere you can look at the internet, you can find all these, all this, all this information. And you can find all these, all these, uh, all these things that happen in Mexico and here and in different countries. And you can see all the corruption that's happening around us. So at the same time, social media has helped us out a lot and opened up our eyes. So we can actually see beyond just the newspaper and the actual television. There's sometimes that I don't even have a chance to watch the news. And I'm going to be honest, there is when the last time I ever watched the news was a long time ago, maybe like presidential debates is what I watched. And that was a long time ago. And that was the last time I actually tuned into the news. So everything I get is from social media. That's how I find everything out. So, you know, as you can see, we are more exposed to this. So obviously, it's like, oh, my God, this is a huge problem. Well, this has always been a problem. These countries are built on corruption. That's what the countries are built up, and they're built on corruption, either here or there or everywhere. It's money talks, man, and people want that power. And, you know, sometimes people get away with it. And most, you know, most people that try to get into that kinds of business, um, greed gets to them and eventually they're taken down by somebody that's bigger that wants their territory or wants, you know, wants their money or, or, or wants a piece of you. Right. And the only way that they can get a hold of you and get a piece of you is to eliminate you. So that's basically how it works. Right. There's nothing ever good that comes from cartels. There's nothing ever good that comes from organized crime. It's it's all bad. And like I said, unfortunately, there's you can't stop it. It's just like an open faucet and it's just the water's just running and there's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that our society can do. We can fight crime all our lives and there's still going to be people that take money and then they try to take the easy route because everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants to drive a Ferrari and, and uh, be important and walk around with guns and, you know, feel untouchable. And, you know, that's, that's the problem is, it's just there's no way that you can combat it. You can kind of stop it and slow it down, but these people are always going to find a way to to figure this out. 
And it is a shame, right? Because it is causing harms. It's causing harm to different countries and different people all around the world. So thank you for listening. And uh, hopefully this was informative. And uh, hopefully this gets you thinking a little bit more about how lucky we are that uh, it's not like that here in this country is is still not as bad as living in a different country where you can't even eat anywhere without somebody driving by and shooting the place up because they haven't paid or because there's somebody in there that they're looking for and uh it's it, it is a it is a crazy 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 thing until next time peace